Guys, we have a problem. Rex may have eaten something that would require surgical removal, so we are rushing her to the vet today. Three nights ago, while I was refilling Rex's pool, I went upstairs and in the time that I was gone, she's never done this before, but she grabbed the siphon head and broke it. By the time I came downstairs and checked on her, I noticed what had happened and then saw that she had a big chunk of it in her mouth. When I went in to try to remove it, she immediately thought it was a game of keep away and refused to drop the plastic. So I called Ed over and together we were able to get Rex out of her pool. I opened up her mouth and took out the piece of plastic, but I worry that she may have eaten other pieces. To give you an idea of what she chewed on and may have eaten, this is what the siphon originally looked like. This is the one we use for our fish. And this is hers. This is what I came down to, and it was just shattered. And again, she's never done this before, so that's why I thought it would be okay to leave her with it for 10 minutes while I helped Ed with dinner or whatever we were doing. But I was able to collect some pieces from her pool after removing this chewed up piece in her mouth, so that took some abuse. And this is everything that I got. This is what all was sunk at the bottom, and I'm just not convinced that that's all the plastic that came off of this. So to be safe, we are bringing her to the vet for a radiograph or x-ray today. The soonest we were able to get her in wasn't until day, and it's been about three days, so we haven't fed her anything because we don't want to encourage, if she has plastic in her, to move further into her system. So I hope there's nothing in there, of course, but in case she did swallow something we're bringing her in because that would need surgery to remove and unfortunately we do have to tape her mouth because our vet is only doing curbside drop-off which is understandable because of covid but uh we're gonna tape her mouth so it's a little safer for him to work with her i'm sorry rex i know i wouldn't want to be taped either but it's for the safety of all the vet staff so i can understand Look, it's a beautiful bracelet around your nose. You're a good girl. Let's go to the vet. She's acting normal, but just in case we want to bring her in. Let's go. So, do you want to explain what you're doing? You've never done that before. Yeah, I guess she's too big for this container. Well, not too big, she's just stronger than she's ever been. So when we put her in and put the lid on, she immediately stuck her nose out of the corner and broke part of the plastic. So we are taping that shut and seeing if we can find some sort of clip to keep it shut. But yeah, that's new. Thanks, yeah. Rex. Oh, and speaking of Rex, we never fixed the whole the walls yet. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Don't look at that actually. Well, Rex and I are at the vet. Rex is not happy, but hey, you did this to yourself. We are at Valley View Pet Hospital in Burnsville, Minnesota, and we are going to see Dr. Doug Gates, who we've known for quite a while. We usually see, or we switch back and forth between him and Dr. Kaiser at Lexington Pet Clinic in Egan, Minnesota, and it really just is based on their availabilities. So Doug was able to see her uh, a little bit sooner, so that's why we're here today. But the cool thing is Dr. Gates and Dr. Kaiser were the two vets together who did nearly headless snake's eye surgery removal back in the day. So they're both awesome reptile Vets. Doug we've known for quite a while. We knew him when he was back in college actually and he has recently graduated and is now a full-blown reptile specialty veterinarian here. So we're very fortunate to have two reptile vets in our area who we trust completely. Although Doug has not, or Dr. Gates, has not seen Rex before and I asked the receptionist if it was going to be an issue that she's a somewhat rowdy four and a half foot alligator. Is that going to be okay because I can't go in since they're doing curbside only and she said it was fine so... I wish them luck. I hope it goes well. I'll just have to have my fingers crossed. There she goes. Good luck, Rex. Behave. <laughs> and now we wait. It thankfully shouldn't be too long of a wait because they're able to see her right away, which is awesome. And she's going in for radiographs or x-rays as well as blood work while she's in there. They're just going to take a sample of blood to make sure everything is normal as far as that goes. And I just really hope she doesn't have any plastic fragments inside of her. I really hope she didn't eat anything that night. If she did, obviously that would mean we'd have to come back ASAP for surgery, which she's in good hands. Dr. Gates knows what he's doing, but I still would rather 
would not go through that. And I think, like, by the time I saw her, she was still playing with a, a piece of plastic, which makes me believe she might not have ingested any at that point, so we might be okay, but I'm just paranoid and want to have that peace of mind knowing that she doesn't have anything in her, so figured we'd bring her in just to be safe. It sounds like a couple of the vet techs might be able to film a little bit of what's going on inside of the clinic with Rex right now, so I guess we'll just hop over to what's happening inside. Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Gates, uh, here with Rex today. Rex is here because we might have eaten some plastic. So what we're going to do is, we already did the physical exam, everything looks great for Rex, um, other than some normal uh, snout curvature stuff that we've already previously known about. So going for the blood draw, what we're going to do is we're going to go for the caudal tail vein here, and that's kind of our go-to for these smaller to medium-sized gators. Um, first things first, we're going to kind of scrub it up the area because I don't want to introduce any feces or any kind of dirty water because these guys like to drag their tail through everything. So we're just going to kind of get it wet and then really scrub up under here. And it's important when we're going in for this that we don't try to go through their scales because they do have bone in their scale that will dull up the needle. Should be enough. Once we're gonna come out, you wanna hold off there. All right. So the lab we send to, they like a couple of slides made up, just so they can look at the red blood cells underneath the microscope. All right. Nice work, team. Woo. <laughs> Right, let her roll back over gently. Perfect. All right, so we have normal lung mass here. Uh, down here we have our stomach. Crocodilians tend to have garbage stomachs, so they always tend to have a little bit of rocks, a little bit of whatnot. Questionable whether this is a little piece of plastic we're worried about or not. It is, fortunately it's a small enough size that I'm not worried about it obstructing. So it will probably just stay in the stomach with the rest of these things and slowly pass its way out. You can see that those kind of pieces there. Nothing is really in the intestines. Looks like it's all just sitting in the stomach. Works down here. That looks good. Yeah, so I think this is what we're dealing with. These little pieces right here and right there. Okay, I just got the call from Doug or Dr. Gates and just got Rex back in the car. It sounds like there are there are no big pieces of plastic that she swallowed. Thank everything. Oh my gosh. There are, however, some very small pieces that kind of look like plastic, it sounds like, in her stomach, but that's along with the other normal gritty uh, substances that are in an alligator's stomach. In the wild, they eat all sorts of like random junk, sometimes garbage, and they often accumulate a small amount of gritty substances in their stomach, similar to a bird's gizzard being full of small rocks to help break down food. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily what the grit is for in an alligator's stomach, but it sounds like it's nothing to really worry about. What Dr. Gates recommended we do in case the little bits that he saw on the radiograph are in fact little bits of plastic, and in case they do get processed through the stomach into the intestines, we're going to feed Rex, and she'll be so happy about this, we're going to feed her a nice sized rat so that the fur from the prey item will actually bind to whatever bits are passing through her intestines and kind of clump together into a nice solid poop and all come out at once. Now, if the bits are plastic and if they do get passed through without becoming part of a um, mouse poop, basically, or a rat poop, their intestinal tracts are so thickly lined, there isn't really any concern at all about any tears. So it sounds like no matter what happens, we shouldn't have to worry. We are going to keep an eye on her just to be safe. And never will I again trust you with your siphon refilling your pool. And I asked Dr. Gates how Rex's weight was because we've been worried recently that she 
she's been looking a little overweight and he said that she is perfect she looks great her body condition is great she seems healthy other than obviously being stunted and a little malformed which he knew her story beforehand but he said she's looking really really good so that made me feel really nice he complimented our husbandry that made me feel even better so yeah that's a bunch of good news today and a lot of relief so we are going to head home I'm going to let her settle back into her room and doctor's orders we're gonna feed her Change of plans since Rex is packed up and her mouth is taped. I reached out to another vet friend of ours, Dr. Hansen, who also is a professor at WITC, or Wisconsin Indian Head Technical College, in New Richmond. She's currently teaching a, an exotic animal course with vet tech students, and they need hands-on experience with reptiles. And boy, are they going to get that today. We've lined it up so that they are expecting Rex, and they are going to very quickly learn how to handle an alligator in a vet setting, as well as how to give one a radiograph. So this is going to be fun. This is also a good opportunity, I figure, to get Rex a second opinion on her situation. Not that I'm that worried about it anymore, but it never hurts to get another vet's input. So this is actually going to work out pretty well, I think. Some students will get experience with an alligator, and I'll get another opinion on Rex. Well, here is Rex. We're at WITC, and we're all taking turns handling an alligator and learning how to do it. She's being a really good girl, too. Uh, she was just weighed today. She's 35 pounds. Nice distance, gals. Okay, so here is our radiograph, and I don't have a ton of experience with rads from crocodilians, but this must be the grit that uh, Doug or Dr. Gates was talking about, and that must be the little piece. Do you think that looks like plastic? You know, it's, it's weird. Plastic doesn't always show up great on radiographs, and so what I'm looking at for that, though, is really the shape of it. It doesn't look like the rest of the little gravel and grit that are in her digestive tract. So that would be my guess looking at this. It does look different than that. And knowing her history and that we're concerned about the fact she ate some weird plastic stuff, I think it's reasonable to think that it's showing up pretty well there. The size of it is, I don't think, super concerning. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and see if we can get... You know, if she were a uh, dog yeah, <laughs> yeah. this size, um, a piece of plastic in the GI tract that shape and size... Honestly, it wouldn't bother me too much. Oh, okay. Um, I would expect that they would probably be, be able to pass it um, nice. without too much difficulty. And if you think about dogs, at least our domestic dogs, don't necessarily have to digest whole animals the way that Rex does. And she's used to digesting and moving big pieces of, of animals oh, that's through true. her digestive tract. And so, you know, I'm thinking it's not going to digest. It's not going to be like a piece of bone that will break down, but it doesn't worry me too much. Um, and it doesn't look particularly sharp. It maybe has a little curve to it, but... Um, it looks like a blunt end there. Yeah, it does a little bit. So, I don't okay. know. I think, I think it's worth keeping an eye on for it. I don't think it's worth going to surgery for sure. Awesome. Well, we'll try feeding her the uh, rodent, and uh, maybe next time she's in for a radiograph just for, you know, an annual checkup, we'll see if that's still there. But I guess we won't worry about it for now. Sounds good. Well, after that, we are done with radiographs and we are going to head back home. Rex behaved really well at both places we went today. So we're going to head home, get her settled in, and I guess we'll feed her a meal. No, Rex, I have to get the tape off. No, no, you're not free yet. Hey, hey. All right, there you go. Oh, don't fall. There you go. Okay. You're home. Look at you. Welcome back. I'll feed you in a bit once you're not as angry. Well, it's actually the next morning because yesterday when we got back, it seemed like Rex was not in a good mood and I didn't think she would grab food because she just kind of wanted to sulk after everything that happened yesterday. But she's in a much better mood this morning, so we're gonna see if she wants food. Hey, look, food signal. Will you take food? Oh yeah, okay, good. Well, like Dr. Gates recommended, we are going to give her a small rat and then hopefully the fur from this guy will help kind of bind to the plastic if it decides to move through. Rex, here. Here you go. Oh, and she's gonna take it with her to go. Enjoy. And wow, that was quick. Okay, well there you go, Rex. Thank you for not eating a ton of plastic. Maybe only having one or two little pieces. 
I'm not feeding you more. I'm sorry. That's all you're getting right now. You're a good weight according to Doug, but we don't want you to get fat, okay? Well, I am yet again very relieved that Rex did not eat enough plastic to be of any concern. No, I'm not feeding you anymore. I'm sorry. I'm also happy that she's a good weight and she seems really healthy like it was a good opportunity to bring her into the vet just for like a, a checkup and blood work and all that fun stuff, but Still didn't want to go through that, still didn't want her to eat her siphon or have the scare of eating her siphon. But now that that's all done, I figured I'd share with you some things that I learned throughout this whole process. Dr. Gates taught me a couple things and I thought maybe you would be interested in this too. But if she had eaten a large chunk of plastic, it actually wouldn't have been a good idea to do surgery if it was in the stomach. If you go through the underside of the belly of an alligator, they have floating ribs and there's some very important muscles that you don't want to cut into. However, you can access the inside of an alligator through their sides. But what's interesting about that is you can really only access the intestines that way because their stomach is located so much closer to their head. So it would have been difficult to get in from the side and access the stomach. So if she had eaten something large, what actually would have been the recommended removal strategy would be to go through her mouth with an endoscope, which is like the, the camera on a long wire with a little clothing at the end, go through her mouth, through her throat, into her stomach to pick those pieces out and then pull them out through her mouth. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm going to leave her alone now and because I'm sure she's sick of me messing with her and yeah, probably. us taking her out, bringing her to multiple vets. As always, we'd like to thank our Patreon backers for your very generous support. And it was actually your contributions that paid for her vet bills today, which weren't cheap, but they were totally worth it to know that she is safe and she is healthy. We'd also like to thank all of our viewers for watching our videos. You help us out tremendously too. So thanks everybody for watching. Rex is going to take off, I guess, so we'll see you next time.